Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to take a look, a more detailed look at the LED interface for a uh, uh, microcontroller. Uh, for, in our case, I'm going to use the AT89S52 microcontroller. Um, in my previous video, I have gone into uh, LED interface, but in this particular video, I'm going to have a more detailed look at the uh, LED, LED interface circuit and I'll be showing you how to build a binary up counter with the AT89S52 so let's get started so there are two particular way the two ways of connecting LEDs to a microcontroller uh, that is uh, current current sinking and current sourcing Let's first, first of all take a look at current sync. In this particular method, if I were to put a logic zero here at the pin uh, port pin, the LED will switch on or light up because here VCC is at a higher potential than uh, the port pin, so current will flow. And uh, this particular method is used in the ED SIM 51 uh, simulator. Uh, but it's not very intuitive because the zero switch on the LED. All right, that, that this circuit will work on all port pins of uh, any of the 8051 microcontroller family, uh, with the exception of port zero. Uh, I will go into detail of port zero later on uh, in a different video. Now, if you want to still stick to uh, current syncing, but uh, you but you would prefer a more intuitive way, you could then what you could do is we could add a hex inverter between the port pin and the LED. So let's see what happens here. So we have. I put in a logic 1 and then the a logic 0 appear at the output of the inverter and current will flow and the LED will switch on. Now there are two benefits of uh, using this particular uh, method here. First of all uh, the purpose of the buffer is buffer meaning this hex inverter it boosts the current capacity of the signal so that you can drive the load you can give and drive the load here and the second benefit is that it reduce it reduces the risk of damage to the ports pins and safeguard the microcontroller and uh, and the load so if anything goes wrong around this region um, the hex inverter probably might get damaged but you still protect your microcontroller. Now if you choose to use the hex inverted uh, method you have to be aware that um, because there are eight port pins uh, of the microcontroller uh, if you're using the hex inverter you will need to use this particular chip uh, known as the 7404. Here's the picture of it and if you notice there are only six inverters in one chip and there are eight port pins so you will need two of these inverters to take care of all the eight pins of the um, microcontroller so the downside of this particular approach is that um, you will increase the chip count of your application. Now the second method uh, which is the current source here if I put a logic one here the LED will come on because uh, because we're operating around about 5 volts here so logic one so this is would be at a higher potential compared to this point so current will Low and the LED will turn on. So this is a more intuitive way 
of uh, switching the LED. So logic one turns the LED on with a uh, current source. Hi, let's now take a look at the current uh, capability of the AT89S52 and also let's see how we can calculate the resistor value for the LED interface. Now for the Atmel uh, 89S52, the sync capability, P0 or port 0 can only sync 26 milliamps, but else port 1, P1, port 2, P2, and port 3, P3, each can sync a total of 15 milliamps. So uh, overall, the whole chip can sync uh, 71 milliamps. Now for the source capability of the uh, 89S52, the port pins is only capable of sourcing 10 milliamps of current. Now, how do we calculate the value of the resistor R of the LED interface? Um, we, in order to do that, we'll need to use, make use of Ohm's law. So the uh, in this case, let's take a look at the red LED. Um, the formula would be uh, VCC minus the forward uh, voltage drop of the LED divided by the forward current of the diode. So um, for a red LED, it's typically it's uh, the forward volt drop is 1.25 volts uh, it goes up to 3.6 volt for the blue led i'll show you some data later on after this uh, so for for a red led we said uh, a few seconds ago it's 1.25 the forward uh, current for the diode would be 15 milliamps um, you can use 10 milliamps. Uh, in my experience, 10 milliamps is ad adequate, but uh, for this example, I'll stick to 15 milliamps. And so if we then make use of this uh, equation here, we substitute VC, which is 5 volts, uh, minus or subtract the forward voltage drop of the LED diode, so 5 minus 1.25 divided by the forward current of the uh, diode which is 15 milliamps that is 15 times 10 to the minus 3 and so here we would have 3.75 divided by 0 0.015 and the answer you get would be 250 ohms I'll be using 220 because the, that is the nearest value I've got in my uh, component, uh, collection of components. So I will be using 220 ohms instead of 250. Okay, I mentioned earlier, uh, this is the, uh, what do you call, the data for the different val values uh, for different color LEDs. So I'm I'll take 10 milliamps uh, as an example. Uh, I'm interested in the red LED, which is this line here. So I draw a line down where it interact, in, in, uh, intersect. Sorry, that would be approximately 1.25. So I've gotten this uh, diagram, which is here from this website. I would leave this link at the bottom of the video. You can go. Uh, check it out for yourself. So if you're using a green LED and if you're using 10 milliamps, you might want to use this graph to determine the forward voltage drop for the uh, LED. Okay, so we have come to the part now where uh, I'll show you how to build a binary up, up counter. Uh, for this project, I, uh, my own preference is to use the current uh, sourcing uh, method. Uh, you may want to try out the uh, current syncing method um, if you wish to. 
but for this project I will I'll be using the uh, current sourcing approach and here's the binary up counter schematic um, for those of you who have been following my my video series uh, you should be very familiar with this circuit by now um, very briefly this is the uh, AT, AT89S52 uh, microcontroller I've connected VCC pin 4T and uh, EA slash VPP pin 31 to VCC and the reset uh, which is pin 9 is connected to a capacitor resistor network now the capacitor resistor network will provide the auto reset when this thing powers up and the switch across the capacitor here will provide a manual reset should you need to, to reset the circuit and down here uh, we have the crystal oscillator connected to pin pin 18 and 19 and uh, the other end of the uh, oscillator crystal oscillator is connected to uh, 233 puff capacitor which is then connected to ground both ends of the capacitor connected to ground and pin 20 is connected to ground so that's the uh, microcontroller section and the eight LEDs are connected to connected to port 1 so port uh, P1.0 all the way down to P1.7 and here uh, are the uh, LED interface and uh, P1.0 all the way down to P1.7 and all the cathodes are tied together and pulled down connected to ground so this is the uh, schematic of the binary uh, up counter and this is the wiring, wiring diagram for the whole thing so you have your microcontroller here your supply voltage pin your reset circuit here and the uh, LED connections from port 1 uh, goes to the uh, individual LEDs and here is the crystal oscillator and a uh, capacitor the 33 puff picofarad capacitor all right don't forget to connect the five volts and ground all right okay so and this is the picture of my uh, construction um, I used two half size uh, breadboard And let's take a look at the source code for this thing. Um, remember, I'm going to build. I'm going to show you how to build a binary counter. So um, let's take a look at this. Um, you should be familiar with this by now if you have watched my earlier video. This is the uh, time delay um, routine here, which is called in the main program. This is the main program. The main program. Uh, as usual I'm starting at 00 H and let's take a look at the first two instruction I loading 00 H hexar to A and from A I push it out to uh, port 1 because that's where the LEDs are and then that will clear the LEDs I'll call the delay now the purpose of the delay is to hold uh, the LED at uh, zero, zero, 0 so that you can see it once the delay is finished it will then go into this instruction we have not come uh, this is the first time uh, in my video series that I'm using this this is actually the increment instruction basically this will add one to the contents of register A so if it starts off with zero zero it will then add one to that so that will become zero one and then it push or you copy that to port one so that will now light up the least significant led all right so the first led will come on cause the delay again 
pause it for a while so that you can see it and then we'll come to this instruction here now this is a compare instruction C and the condition is jump when not equal not equal to what we are comparing a the contents of a with this value so we're looking out for one 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 which is basically ff so it will look for this value and if it's not equal to this FFFF, FF in hexa, it will then repeat, which is this one. So uh, it will increment A again, display it to the port, delay it, check it again. Is it uh, FF hexa? No. Go back and do this again. So it this program will go keep incrementing A and uh, displaying it to the uh, LEDs to port 1 All right, until it gets to a point when A becomes 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1, one which is the hexa equivalence FF it will then drop down to this um, instruction which then sends it back to the top and start the whole thing all over again and you will see the binary count on the LEDs all right so uh, before we look at the uh, LEDs in action just to point out to you that this is the least significant bit here and the most significant bit so if you want to view it the other way around you need to turn this uh, target board round you see what I mean in the uh, short video in a moment okay so now uh, when you're done building the uh, binary counter you need to type in the uh, source code that I mentioned earlier into the ED SIM 51 uh, and then assemble the file and then create the hex file if you're not familiar with the uh, process uh, of creating the hex file uh, please refer to uh, video 19 of my video series on hex files uh, you will find the information in that uh, video Having created a hex file, you then need to upload or burn the hex file into the microcontroller. Again, if you're not familiar how to do this, please refer to video 18 on uh, programming the AT, AT89S52 microcontroller. This is the uh, binary up counter in operation. This is the uh, least significant LED and this one here is the most significant LED. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next uh, video. Bye.